This video will show how to display in three dimensions earthquake data associated with an active subduction zone. These visualizations are useful when trying to understand the geometries of plate boundaries. In this example, the colored spheres are scaled and colored in proportion to the magnitude of the seismic events. The mesh diagram depicts a third-order polynomial trend surface that was fitted to these events. The overlying Google Earth image allows us to see the location of surface features relative to the seismicity and inferred plate boundaries. The remainder of this video will show how to download earthquake data and plot it in three dimensions. We'll start by choosing a site. In this example, we have selected a very active plate margin located along the western border of Chile. The large white numbers show the extents of the project area in longitude and latitude. Next, we'll download the earthquake magnitude data by entering the address for the USGS Earthquake Hazards Program site into a web browser. Scroll down a bit and select the Spreadsheet Format option and the USGS NEIC PDE 1973 to Current Date option. Enter the northernmost latitude, the southernmost latitude, the westernmost longitude, and the easternmost longitude for your study area. Scroll down and click on the Submit button. When the data appears, right-click anywhere within the screen and click on the Select All option from the pop-up menu that appears. Right-click again and select the copy option. Open a copy of Windows Notepad and select the Edit Paste option. Delete the extraneous garbage from the bottom and the top of the file. Select the File Save option and enter rawdata.txt for the name of the output file. Launch RockWorks and select the File Import ASCII program. Enter the recently created rawdata.txt as the input file. Set the delimiter to a comma. Click on the Process button and the data will appear within the RockWorks data sheet. Now, let's change the titles for the columns that we will be manipulating. Right-click on any column title and the Column Settings dialog will appear. Change Column 5 to Lat for Latitude. Change Column 6 to Lawn for Longitude and change Column 7 to Mag for Magnitude. Let's also change column 8 to depth. For reasons that will become apparent later on, we need to change some of our units so that everything is consistent. With this in mind, we're going to be converting the longitude and latitude to UTM coordinates. This requires that we define the UTM zone. So click on Display Project Dimensions, select the UTM Projection and Zone tab, click on the UTM Zone button, and select Zone 19 South from the index map. Now, let's change the titles for columns 10 and 11 to Easting and Northing so that we have a place to store the upcoming UTM coordinates. Select the Chords Longitude Latitude to UTM menu option. Set the input columns to longitude and latitude. Set the output columns to easting and northing. Set the UTM units to meters, the decimal places to zero, and click on the process button. 
We now have populated easting and northing columns. We've still got one more conversion to perform. The depths are in positive kilometers. To be consistent with the coordinate scheme, we need to change these to negative meters. Right click on the depth column and select the Columns, Math, Column and Constant option. Set the depth column for both the input and the output. This will cause the program to overwrite the items within the depth column with the output computations. Set the constant to minus 1000. Set the operation to multiplication and click on the process button. The depths within the data sheet have now been converted from positive kilometers to negative meters. Everything is consistent. Now is a good time to save the data before we proceed. So let's select the File Save option and save the data sheet as Chilean Earthquakes.atd. The easiest way to set our project dimensions based on the new data is to select the Scan Data Sheet option from the Project Dimensions tab and specify Easting as our X column, Northing as our Y column, and depth as our Z column. Press the process button and the project dimensions now show the extents of our data set. Let's make a color-coded 3D diagram of the earthquake focal points. Click on the map 3D points option. Select the easting column as the X column, the northing column as the Y column, and the depth column as the Z column. Let's set the symbol dimensions to be variable such that the spheres are proportional to the magnitude of the event. The sphere colors will be scaled from the cold colors like dark purple for deep events to hot colors like bright red for shallow events. We click the process button and a diagram appears showing all of the earthquakes within our project area that occurred between 1973 and November 21st, 2010. That brings our step-by-step -step instructions to an end. From here, you may want to experiment with some surface modeling or even block solid modeling. These topics are covered in more detail within other videos. Thank you for watching.